startup and big company connection you would think is just like a marriage made in heaven. It's like chocolate and peanut butter. It's just made, and it's so easy to do, uh, you would imagine. And yet we just had a session yesterday with a bunch of startups saying not so much, not, not so easy. Those very fast moving flywheels of startups trying to move the big gears of enterprise. So we'll spend the next few minutes kind of unpacking that. So what I'd like you guys to do is introduce yourself, a little bit about your company, your role in the company, and also uh, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing with startups and your big enterprises. Anna, please lead us off. Okay, so hello everyone, my name's Anna Silva. Uh, not related to Mark, but maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. we still have to find that out. <laughs> uh, so I work at Sonai, uh, which I would say that at core, although we have many businesses, we are a retail company, uh, and I'm responsible for our uh, open innovation projects, working with R&D, universities, private companies, and startups. And so I would say that we've been running, let's say, kind of this process around startups for almost two years now. And that's what I've wanted also to, to share a little bit uh, with you. For a little bit of a context, in terms of retail, we do food retail, fashion retail, consumer electronics and sports goods. So this gives us a wide scope of, let's say, businesses to work with startups. Hi everyone, my name is Yoni Habitant. I'm a digital strategic analyst at uh, L'Atelier BNP Paribas, uh, which is one of the leading banks in Europe. Uh, L'Atelier is um, a startup company in a big corporate. We are uh, 50 people based in three um, ups, three regions, uh, Paris, uh, Shanghai and San Francisco. And uh, we have mainly three, three activities. The first one is prospective and influence. So we track the weak signals in different verticals, um, such as fintechs, um, smart city, uh, retail, uh, digital working, um, e-health. Um, and we track also the, 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 the trends in, the, in these different uh, verticals. The second activity is uh, what we call the uh, consulting services. So we accompany the digital transformation of BNP Paribas business lines and their clients, the corporate clients of uh, BNP Paribas. And the third activity is the open innovation uh, or the acceleration programs. And we will uh, um, describe later the, uh, the, the two, two programs. So the first one is uh, a FinTech accelerator and the second one is uh, what we call Innov and Connect, which is uh, more focused on uh, um, accompanying the corporate clients of, of BNP Paribas, um, the, the corporate clients of, of BNP Paribas. Um, that's Great, it. and you know what, I, I failed to introduce myself. I'm Mark Silva. I'm actually co-chairing the startup act activation uh, with, with Jeremy here. Uh, Jeremy is joining us in the role, not as moderator though, uh, or co-chair, but as uh, the alumni, from the, really the founder of the Unilever Foundry, one of the, one of the world's uh, leading examples of startup innovation. Oh, thanks, Mark. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, my name's Jeremy Bassett. Um, and as Mark said, I spent the first 13 years of my professional career at Unilever, uh, where I was responsible for initiating and then leading this thing called the Unilever Foundry, which was our platform at Unilever to connect and engage with the startup ecosystem. And in December last year, I left uh, Unilever to go on a journey with some friends from Tesco, Diageo, Lloyd's, and Ministry of Defense to help other corporates engage in this world of working with startups. Uh, and so that's what, I'm, what we're doing now at CoCubes. And let's start it off. Uh, it seems like such an obvious idea. Every one of the global 2000 are, are flocking to Silicon Valley, to Tel Aviv, to places where centers of innovation, uh, because all this technology is not just disrupting their business, it's also opening up new models. It's almost a form of capital reallocation that's happening, going from R&D and other areas of the business into startup innovation, right? And, and so it seems inevitable that all of the Global 2000 are gonna be doing this, which is good news for the startups in the room. Why do you need a foundry? Why do you actually need a place that, uh, you know, if, if, if this becomes a discipline, um, what, why, is, what is it, why does a company like Unilever need something like the foundry? Yeah, it's a good question. I think um, 
you know, for us at Unilever, the foundry was definitely part of the journey. There was a lot that happened before then. And what happened before then was uh, we had a huge amount of different things happening across the organization, which were quite fragmented. So the foundry gave a home to those. It also gave us a front door. So it was confusing for startups and for Unilever to know how, does, how do we interact with the outside. And so by providing that front door, it, it created this, this, door, this platform, if you like, that said, we're open for business. We're ready to engage with the outside. And that was as, as important for the outside as it was for the inside. And then the th uh, third thing it did is it gave us a process. Um, so I think, you know, as, as we embrace the new, as we make this transition from one era of industrialization into a new era of growth, I think one of the things we have to give our organizations is a framework for collaboration. And so the Foundry provided that framework for collaboration that made it quick and easy and cost effective for every part of the organization to engage with the outside. Yeah, and I see you nodding your head. It, yeah. This resonates with you? This no, one. yeah, I, I totally agree. Independently of if, if your company has such a, ro a robust structure as, as the foundry at Unilever was, I think that so having sort of a dedicated team or even if it is a distributed team around, around your, your business or around the different geographies uh, adds a layer of processes and adds a layer of intent. And it kind of acts like this front end Mm. For in, for innovation with startups, oh, so you're like a UX. which is yeah, yeah. which is re really relevant for them because then it's easier for them to know at which door they have to knock. For example, in our case, we have this distributed between the innovation team where I sit, between our IT labs structure, and then between our corporate venture capital arm. So between the three of us, we collaborate, each bringing their own perspective, but kind of then uh, can onboarding startups to kind of work with us. Right, and you're, you're also acting as a translator for the rest of the organization. I, I, how many employees are at Sinai? Uh, over 40K, yeah, so. And, and how about B, B, BNP Paribas? Yes, B, so BNP Paribas is 200,000 people. It's just a couple people. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> around the world, and um, maybe couples of, of words about the, our, our innovation programs. Um, so b basically, in, in 2015, we uh, launched what we call Innov and Connect program. And uh, the idea is the following. Um, BNP Paribas has um, um, some strong um, SMEs, so co corporate clients. Um, and the, the first of all, we t try to identify their pain points, their, their challenges. Uh, so it's a, a service that we provide to, to our clients. And after that, we track and we, we identify, we source the, the relevant startup in, in the ecosystem, in Europe mainly. Um, and we make what we call the reverse pitching. So the re re reverse pitching in which the company, the corporate client pitch um, uh, their, their challenges um, to, the, to the startup. And after that, there is um, uh, so the calls for proposals. And the, the, the most relevant startups are uh, paired with uh, the, the corporate clients during six months. And this is the, the overall uh, picture or the process uh, that, that we have. And during these, these six months, one of the main idea uh, we talk about that is the construction of trust. Um, so I have a PhD in management sciences and during more than six years, I try to uh, uh, understand the uh, collaboration between public and private partnerships um, uh, in different ecosystems, uh, mainly in Silicon Valley, Israel, Morocco, and France. Um, and uh, really, uh, proof of concept, there is a meat of proof of concept, but you need to um, construct or to build um, a, a trustful relationship between the, 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 the corporate clients uh, the, the, and, and the startup. This is uh, one of the main idea. And, and, and so you yes. see the role of these programs, not just developing process, but also building that trust. It's a yes. trustful place that you can go. Yes. Because if not, great ideas go to corporations to die, right? I, I, I've walked up to, you walk up to Ford at a big CES, or any, you walk up to, I don't mean to point them out, you walk up to any large corporation, you say, I've got a billion dollar idea, you think they'd be saying, bring it in, and instead you kind of had to beat them over the head with it uh, to, to get in there. Absolutely. So, so, so how do we actually facilitate that? And, and again, I, I had that experience. Uh, to your point, the uh, Unilever has been on a long journey mm. to uh, 
let bring the outside in, um, and and so the process is a big part of that. And then you're saying facilitation of trust, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, I agree with you. And uh, in parallel with this first program, we we have uh, another one we, uh, we we call fintech accelerator. So the idea, the process is uh, uh, the the same, but now the idea is to identify the challenges of the BNP Paribas business lines, okay? Uh, and after that, to identify, to source the relevant startup and to run proof of concept during four months. Um, so we have these two, uh, these two, uh, two programs. Um, uh, that's all for, 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 yeah. the, for the moment. No, I'm thinking about acceleration. Uh, for, for a lot of us uh, in startup land, we think about acceleration and sprints in the matter of days or weeks. Um, and and I, it's, it's something to be said that acceleration in corporations is in status of months, but still much better than this, the alternative, which is quick yes or no is great, along maybe is death for startups, right? Mm -hmm. So let's pretend that there's 11 startups that are coming out here um, momentarily, and they're going to be pitching their hearts out for, for uh, the, the grand prize and reputation and prize, but also for your business. Uh, how do, they, how do they connect with you guys, or how do they find you in your organizations? What's the best doorway in? Is, it, is there a portal uh, usually, or is there actually a better way? Is it, is it serendipity? <laughs> how, do we, how do we beat serendipity, I guess? I, I would say that it's, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, so it could be LinkedIn, it could be at an event such as this one. Uh, but I think that uh, for most startups, I think that just being in the ecosystem, so. Uh, put it th this way, I think that for corporates, it is important that they are there for the ecosystem, that they go to the meetups, that they go to the pitch days or the open days of the incubators or of the acceleration programs, that they pass on the message to those incubators and acceleration programs re re regarding what they're looking for in terms of business needs or technologies, and kind of being out there, then it gets easier to kind of get. So for example, we get a lot of intros or recommendations of startups coming from the ecosystem itself. Things that we are not proactively scouting, but then the ecosystem just comes and says, I think we sh you should meet this, this company. So but everything kind of works. Uh, fr from our perspective, uh, we, we scout uh, startup in different events. Uh, as you, you know, there are several uh, uh, clusters in, in France, so the, the local uh, ecosystem um, is, is really uh, dynamic and, and rich, and even in, in Europe. Uh, we have also um, uh, hubs in, uh, in Shanghai and, and in, uh, in the Silicon Valley at San Francisco. Um, so we participate and we, or, and we organize different events um, to, to, to source the, 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 the startup in, in different topics. Uh, it could be on, on, uh, on AI, on uh, uh, data analytics, on fraud also. Uh, and maybe one, one, one point uh, which is very important for startups um, you know, um, as, as a bank, financial institution, we have uh, some constraints um, regarding legal compliance, uh, as you all know. And all the, the solutions uh, that are designed by the startup or co-designed between the startup and the, the corporate or between the startup and our business lines have to be uh, secured by design. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, key aspects that uh, I would like to share with you. It's certainly one of the gauntlets that, that startups have to go through to work with highly regulated industries like financial, pharma, etc. So let's time travel for fun and go back and talk to ourselves three years ago. We've learned so much and it is, I mean, I, I have to say these are the co-architects of a brand new space that never, it's like uh, social media back in 2007, 2008 is going to be MySpace or Friendster or Facebook that's going to win, right? We know now. But, but these are early, early days when it comes to startup innovation and how to do it right. Go back and talk to yourself. Fly back in time three uh, years ago. What would you tell yourself today that would help you leapfrog into a better program today? And I'll start with you because you're kind of doing that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, three years was basically, you know, almost the start of our journey on this. Uh, Foundry was launched just over three years ago. So I think the th three things that I would say to myself back then, uh, 
One is drive this through the core of your business. It doesn't belong in a separate innovation team or in a side part of the organization. It's something that can actually fundamentally not only transform the way you, your innovation, but can transform your culture. So it belongs in the core of your business. The second thing I'd say is um, make sure you're working, you know, you're not just trying to bring the best startups in, but you're working with some of the best partners. Uh, and so working with third party scouts really um, saved us a huge amount of resource and meant that we were bringing the best of the startup ecosystem back into Unilever. Uh, and then the third thing I'd say is just get going on it. Uh, it's so easy to spend 12 months in PowerPoint slides hypothesizing as to what you should be doing in this space. Um, it doesn't cost very much to get going. Uh, there's lots of different organizations that can make it quick and easy and reasonably foolproof for you to get started on this. It, so just get going. Let me just ask you to unpack number two because I see so many companies lost for three to four years in the tool shed and they're in, in they're being threatened of being put out of business. The center of excellence sitting in Silicon Valley and they're gonna fly in a completely new team and replace them because they haven't made the kind of scale impact. Instead of focusing, as you're saying, on driving the impact in the business, they're working on how do we spin up programs and they've got resources and dedicated that rather than bringing those groups in. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? How do you? Yeah, there's so many great examples of how to do this, uh, how not to do this. Um, and I've done some of those myself. I, I think, you know, as innovation leaders in big corporates, we have one job to do, and that is to land and scale innovation across our organizations. Everything else is a distraction, uh, whether it's scouting for startups, whether it's trying to look at, you know, having a bit of a uh, play around with something on the side, or whether it's even organizing events and doing tech tourism. Like, all of that stuff's a distraction from the one job that we have, which is to land and scale. Um, and so, what I would say is, focus on that one job and then bring in the best partners that can help you execute the rest. Uh, I would say probably building up on what Jeremy has said, uh, start from your strategy and from your business pain points and from your consumer needs or consumer pain points um, instead of just doing relevant, doing work with startups because everyone else is, is doing and uh, prepare to do things, to experiment things, even if conditions are not ideal. Because many times what startups really value is uh, the opportunity that you give them uh, for them to test their solutions in a real uh, business setting. So the opportunity to, to have a real test bed, to have someone sitting across the table and commenting on their business model or fine tuning while it will be hard for their solution to scale for 500 stores, for example. So mm. start, start doing that, start experimenting, but don't go for immediately, let's say, for the big bank programs or, or, uh, or for the, let's say, the more uh, PR elements of run or working with startups that then might, might not be so uh, relevant uh, when it comes to building the trust that, that Yoni was, was talking about. And I think it's absolutely uh, a key. Do something that will have an outcome. Even if the outcome is, look, we don't think that your technology is mature enough for us to partner. That's as good as, as a feedback for a startup as it would be getting, getting a, 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 contact, a contract. That's great. Okay, well, what I would like to share with you is, um, so the open innovation uh, from our perspective at L'Atelier BNP Paribas, um, the open innovation paradigm is a question of, uh, or meeting between cheetahs and zebras. Uh, cheetahs are uh, business leaders who run faster, um, who have the uh, entrepreneurship mindsets, uh, and who have um, a challenge to take up. And after that, these cheetahs, these business leaders, have to uh, scout for the relevant zebras. And the zebras could be you guys, uh, startupers, so the entrepreneurs. Uh, as zebras, they look different, they have an excellent eyesight, um, uh, they could or they are able to, uh, um, to adapt to different contexts and environment. Um, and, but but we, we, we think also that beyond the startup, there are uh, other ways to, uh, to innovate 
um, through uh, um, collaboration with academics, um, through, for, for instance, so the, the Applied Research uh, Institute, because um, as a bank we have uh, several uh, challenges in terms of security, cybersecurity, fraud, phishing, and so on and so forth. And maybe my intuition is to uh, think about collaboration between um, the corporate uh, startup and fine tune to some extent the solution with uh, uh, academics, with, with researchers. Great. Well, we're out of time, but thanks. That went fast. Appreciate it. Please join me in thanking the, audio, uh, the, the panel for a great uh, sharing of ideas. Thanks, everybody.